all right guys so there are certain segments of mainstream media that are having an identity crisis after spending uh basically a year uh kissing the Biden administration's ass right um they, they realized that hey you know a, a lot of people don't really like this guy right they don't like the way he's governing they don't like the current position that this country's in he's not fulfilling any of his promises and because of that uh the gop has ba basically become more popular than it's been in, in a while right as we're seeing for the first time in a long time more people say hey i'm leaning more republican than i am democrat now this is an issue right the mainstream liberal media they're freaking out about this because there's some segments of the mainstream media that still want to just kiss biden's hind parts to no end right and one of the shows or mainstream media that is dedicated to kissing biden's hind parts no matter what no matter how fast the titanic uh sinks um is the liberal view in which uh miss sunny holston here is going to give us a big brain take in which she basically claims that republicans are treating joe biden like a black president take a look that's because he wants to still appear as this you know bipartisan uh you know consensus builder and yeah. i think he wants to still be perceived as this moderate and those things are now considered leftist right they're considered progressive even though something like 94 percent of americans want those policies but i i will say I, I agree with you in the sense that there were some things that he there are things that he has not gotten credit for like he inherited this pandemic from the trump administration yes. it was badly handled he he was able to pass a 1.9 trillion dollar relief package, which a majority of uh, Republicans voted against, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's something that he gets credit for. I think he also gets credit for his incredibly diverse judicial nominations. I think mm -hmm. there have been about 41 federal judges. Mm -hmm. Those are lifetime appointments. Yeah. People need to understand how important that is because the Trump administration definitely padded the bench mm -hmm. with with uh, conservatives. I do think, though, that the missed opportunity and the Paris Accord, let's remember that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I, th I think... Um, you know, where he hasn't done well is basically delivering federal policy in favor of the people who who put him in the White House, and that's communities of color. We didn't see any movement on voting rights. We didn't see any movement on police reform. But all those other still, things you just listed do benefit the black community. They, they do. Okay. But the infrastructure bill, I think, was a leaning into uh, white independents, and I think it was a leaning into white moderates. But the bottom line is, those aren't the folks that really took him over the finish line. Those aren't. That's not the Democratic base. No. A uh, Democratic president has made it into the White House without the support of the black community. The black community now, voters 50 and uh, oh, um, over that are registered, there's been a 36 point drop in, in the net approval. And what I took away uh, was he said something like, I had no idea that my Republican friends would do this. Well, he's governing like it's the 1990s. It's 2022. He sat for eight years next to a black president, yet didn't think he'd be treated like one. And that's what he's being treated like. <laughs> Bruh, incredible stuff. Absolutely incredible stuff. I can't believe these people get paid hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to say stuff like this. Because they quite literally cannot do any political analysis without looking at it through the lenses of race. Everything to them is race, okay? And, and this kind of like racial uh, conversation around, uh, around Joe Biden, in, in my opinion, is some of the most uh, fascinating mental gymnastics that I've seen in a long, long, long time. Because I've heard this take from Joy Reid uh, in the past. And I think Sonny Holston probably watches Joy Reid, right? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, because Joy Reid has, has hypothesized that, uh, people don't like Joe Biden because, um, he was the, uh, vice president of a black man, right? And, and the reason why they say that is because they can't say that they, they don't like Joe Biden because he's white, because if they say that, then it goes against the white privilege narrative, right? So in order to explain why people don't like their daddy, they, they have to say, well, well, it's not because he's white. It, it's because he was vice president of a black man, right? See, uh, people are racist, right? Evidence that people are racist. And um, Sonny Holston here is saying something similar in the sense that, well, Republicans don't want to work with Joe Biden because, you know, he was the uh, vice president of a black man, right? And he's being treated like a black president because of that. You shouldn't be surprised that you're being treated like a black president. You you were the vice president of a black uh, president okay as if by default you're going to be treated worse as a president because you're black right when we know objectively that's not true because if you look at obama's approval uh numbers versus biden's approval numbers uh obama's approval numbers are better 
right? So where's all that racial hatred, right? You would think that if it, there was so much racial hatred in this country, okay, uh, the Obama uh, approval ratings would be a lot lower than they, they were, okay? Especially compared to Biden, who, in my opinion, has branded himself as somebody that's similar to Obama, right? He's piggybacked off Obama. Again, I, I find this stuff to be absolutely <laughs> incredible because according to Sonny Holston and people like Joy Reid, uh, Republicans aren't working with Biden because they simply disagree with him on the issue, right? Because they simply didn't want to spend trillions of dollars uh, on a stimulus package, right? It's not that, right? It's not because they don't agree with federalizing our elections. It's, it's not that. No, no, no. It's simply because of race, right? Race has everything to do with it, okay? The fact is, it's like, no, no, no. The Republicans have shown they're actually willing to work with Biden on things that they agree with Biden on when it comes to policy, for example, when it came to the bipartisan infrastructure bill, if the Republicans were so racist as uh, Sonny Holston here is trying to imply, then why did Republicans work with Joe Biden to pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill? Why did he do that for? If they're so racist to the point where they're treating Joe Biden like a black president, right? Which means they don't want to work with him. They don't like Joe Biden, right? Why did they work with Joe Biden to pass an infrastructure bill? They didn't even want to do that under Trump, right? They didn't want to do it under Trump. And obviously, uh, Trump uh, was not the vice president of a black man. If the Republicans are so racist, then why Tim Scott begged the Democrats to work with him to compromise on police reform, right? A so-called black issue. And if the Democrats are not racist, then why in the world did they not work with Tim Scott on police reform, especially last year in the middle of the whole George Floyd thing? Right. So, I mean, there are concrete examples of when Republicans are willing to work with Democrats. But I think that as of right now, it's not the Republicans that are holding up Biden's agenda. It's Democrats that are holding up Biden's agenda. Right. Particularly Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Do they not like him? Right. Do, are they opposing Biden's agenda uh, because he was the vice president of a black man, too? <laughs> right. Are they racist, too? I mean, we already heard them basically call them racist on MLK Day, right? Uh, Kirsten Cinema and, and Joe Manchin. So, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if she thinks that. So, that's not the only big brain take uh, on The View that I want to talk about today. Uh, we also have another one uh, coming from Whoopi Goldberg, who uh, is fear-mongering about voting rights. And she basically makes the argument that uh, <laughs> we're headed in a direction in which uh, women are going to lose the right to vote. Take a look. This is part of the big plan. This is part of the big plan to control what happens in America. I believe what mm -hmm. happens in America. If you take those voting rights away, people are going to be so angry, but there'll be nothing they can do about it because we're in charge. Next thing comes the women. We're going to take your rights away, just right. like we're taking X, Y, and mm -hmm. Z, because there'll be nothing you can do. This country seemingly, or many people in it, seemingly want to be to manipulate it. To oh, I was going to say to destroy it. Well, I don't know if they realize that it, it will be destructive. I don't, I, because, mm -hmm. listen, when we talk about anti-Semitism and we talk about Anne Frank and we can't teach what happened to black people and we, mm -hmm. we, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that's suddenly starting to disappear now. That isn't, that is being sort of called is well yeah it's just you whining that's just you saying this is happening to me yeah because it is right it is just you whining and saying that it's happening to you because half the things that you said there uh, aren't happening right women aren't losing their rights to vote okay people aren't losing their right to vote in, in general uh people aren't banning the teacher of black history or you know things about like the holocaust and stuff like that no, nobody's banning that stuff right nobody is doing that at all okay you, you're making that up it is made up right now, um, unlike, you know, some parts of the Internet, I'm not an advocate of taking away women's right to vote, right? Repealing the 19th Amendment, okay? Even though I've heard arguments for it, I'm not all the way there, right? I don't think that that's the right thing to do. However, again, listening to The View and some of these uh, women's uh, opinions on politics, these are supposed to be the, uh, some of the more educated women in regards to these issues, at least educated enough that um, this network justifies paying them millions of dollars to talk about politics, uh, yeah, that, <laughs> in my opinion, is probably the strongest argument uh, for uh, <laughs> repealing the 19th Amendment, if that's what you're going to do, right? Just listen to The View. One show, right? And yeah, that, that's going to make a lot of people question <laughs> women's voting rights, okay? But that's not me. I'm not there yet. I don't think that uh, women uh, should uh, have their right to vote taken away, 
okay? And I don't think that their right to vote is under attack. But I do think that women's rights is under attack, specifically in regards to um, the far left woke progressive movement, right? You want to talk about women's rights, let's talk about uh, biological men competing against biological women in sports. What about that, right? Since you care about women's rights so much, what about that? What about women being reduced down to terms that strip their womanhood, for example, uh, like pregnant person, right? Or a uh, ministrator, okay? Which is a term that the uh, New York Times used in a recent article to describe uh, women, right? In, in periods, okay? Ministrator, right? That, in my opinion, is the attack on womanhood and women's rights. Not anything having to do with uh, the GOP voting laws. But again, I mean, they are a part of the uh, propaganda uh, machine, right? The view is a part of the propaganda machine, which they go up here and they, you know, fear monger and say all this stuff that's not true, right? That has no basis in reality whatsoever to try to make the audience believe that <laughs> the GOP is a party of racist, sexist, homophobic bigots, right? That, that's what they want people to think. OK, so like I said, hey, I don't think that anybody is taking away uh, women's rights to vote. And I think that uh, very few people are actually advocating for that. I'm not saying that none of them aren't, but, but I don't think it's necessarily a super popular position. However, again, watching The View uh, really makes you think on that. But let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Most importantly, share a, a black conservative perspective piece.